Pregnant women have an expanded vascular volume. Even though their hemoglobin and hematocrits may be lower, that is the concentration of hemoglobin in their blood is low, they actually have more blood than most patients do, which means they can tolerate a significant amount of blood loss. Therefore, postpartum hemorrhage is defined by 500 cc's after a vaginal birth and 1,000 cc's after a c-section. Now keep in mind, if that happened in a gunshot victim, they would essentially have lost approximately 20% uh, of their circulating volume and be in significant shock. Women who are po post-delivery aren't going to be in shock from this amount of blood loss, but you do have to make sure they don't continue to lose it. The first thing you're going to do is use your physical exam skills and assess the uterus. Because the state of the uterus tells you a lot about what might be going on. If you cannot palpate the uterus, that is, it is absent, it is likely to be uterine inversion. If it's boggy, big and soft, it's probably atony. If, on the other hand, it's firm, and simply won't contract down, it's probably retained placenta. And if it's normal, it's probably not a uterine problem at all, it's probably simply a vaginal laceration. All the while, don't forget, postpartum bleeding can be a product of disseminated intravascular coagulation. And even though you may try to find the source of bleeding, if she continues to bleed a significant amount and you cannot find the correct cause, unexplained bleeding is the final diagnosis. And this we covered in the GYN pelvic anatomy lecture. If you have unexplained or severe postpartum hemorrhage, you need to do surgery to ligate arteries, and eventually, if you can't get the bleeding to stop, do a total abdominal hysterectomy. By the way, most of these are gonna be corrected with surgery. Inversion requires surgery. Atony is the only one that doesn't, and you're gonna use Pitocin to try to get it to contract down. Retained placenta requires surgery. And vaginal lacerations require surgery, that is a suture. Disseminate intravascular coagulation We'll get to you at the very end of this lecture, and if you want to know more details about it, check out the hematology lectures in the medicine series. Let's talk about each of these one at a time. The most common of these is uterine atony. Uterine a tone e, that is without tone. In this condition, you essentially have a floppy uterus, which cannot contract down. This is usually a product of a prolonged labor, a labor that used Pitocin that you just turned off, but turned off too soon, or in the case of use of tocolytics. You either work the uterus too hard and now it's pooped, or you gave it a medication to tell it to chill out. The patient is going to present with a postpartum hemorrhage and a boggy uterus. The diagnosis is clinical. And the treatment is to get the uterus contracted down. You're going to do this first with massage. Stimulate the uterus, get it to contract and squeeze down on itself. If that fails, you can use methrogen or Pitocin. Especially if you had the Pitocin going during delivery and all of a sudden you turned it off, turn it back on. For those of you going for 270, know about PGF2-alpha, hemabate, a way you can turn off bleeding post 
partum. But ultimately, if you can't get this uterine to contract down, you're going to have to go to surgery. This is the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage. Now let's talk about uterine inversion. This is a problem where the uterus essentially births itself. It's caused by a defect in the myometrium. What happens is that the normal uterus expels all the placental contents and then it tries to contract down. What's the idea is that it goes from a big uterus all and it shrinks back down. But because there's a defect in the myometrium, it begins to fall into the uterus lumen. Now the rest of the uterus, as it contracts down, pushes that piece further and further through the birth canal. Until eventually it simply inverts. And it's actually in the vagina. So the way this presents is postpartum hemorrhage and an absent uterus. And the idea is that you're supposed to contract down to close off blood vessels. This inverted uterus still is bleeding. The placenta had bored its way into the blood supply. And now it's not, rather than contract down, it's simply inverted. So it's still as large as it was just after delivery of the placenta. It hasn't contracted down, it's just inverted. And you can diagnose this clinically. Obviously you're gonna have an absent uterus, but if you do the speculum exam, you're gonna see the back of the uterus looking at you. The treatment for this is to do a transvaginal tacking. It's transvaginal surgery where you essentially tack down the fornices. And after surgery, if you put it back and it still continues to bleed, now that it's held in place, you can give Pitocin to help the uterus contract down. Next, let's talk about vaginal lacerations. These are going to happen in precipitous births those that happen too fast, those with macrosomal births, big babies, or if we, the doctors, do the lacerating ourselves with an episiotomy. The patient is going to have a normal uterus despite postpartum hemorrhage and you're going to diagnose it and you're going to do this for every delivery every time you're simply going to look at the vagina and you're going to see the lacerations or the site of bleeding. And because this is a laceration, it's going to require surgery. That is, you're going to give local anesthesia and suture it shut. Retain placenta is the reason why you look at the placenta after every delivery. It's caused either by the placenta burrowing too deeply or by the presence of an accessory lobe. Such that as the placenta, tear, as the placenta delivers, the placenta tears, leaving behind a piece of the placenta still in the uterus. Now remember, the placenta's job is to bore into the uterus to steal mom's blood supply. And it's to deliver that blood to baby. If you tear it, those blood vessels are bleeding freely, but they're still attached to mom, so they're still leaching mom's blood, just bleeding into her uterine cavity. And the depth of the burrow is how you name the retained placenta. The patient is going to present as a postpartum hemorrhage that can be quite brisk and a firm uterus. It's firm because there's something in the way of it contracting down. So a normal uterus, I'm sorry, a normal placenta looks like this. And it's got one big vessel that goes to baby 
Niposana's blood vessels don't ever go to the surface. And if you can imagine that if you had an accessory lobe, for example, it's easier to understand an accessory lobe than it is one burrowed very deeply, that the blood vessels would never go to the edge, but they might connect the two lobes. And if you delivered the placenta and it tore, what you'd see when you inspected the placenta, you wouldn't actually see the tear site, but what you'd see is the normal blood vessels that never go to the surface and the blood vessels that were attached to the accessory lobe that go all the way to the edge. And this is why you look at the, every placenta every time. Because the placenta will have blood vessels that go to the edge. And if you see blood vessels that go to the edge, it means that there's a part of the placenta left behind. The treatment is first to do a dilation and curatage. Get, try to scrape out everything that you can. If it continues to bleed, you may not be able to get deep enough with the DNC. In that case, you're going to have to do a total abdominal hysterectomy. And whatever you do, you're going to follow up the beta quant because this is a way you can set yourself up for having choriocarcinoma. Now, the depth is how you name it. What does that mean? Here's the uterus, the myometrium, and the serosa on the end. If you have a endometrial lobe, it's called a creta. If you have it burrowing into the myometrium, it is called increta. And if you have it burrowing all the way through to the serosal layer, Percreta. All right, let's finish with disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC. DIC is not common, but a regular complication following delivery because placental contents get into the bloodstream, inducing DIC. And what DIC is, is the formation of fibrin clots. Fibrin clots consume platelets and factors. And so what happens is that clots form where they shouldn't, use up the stuff that make clots, so clots that should form don't. The, what you're looking for here is a postpartum hemorrhage that won't stop. You haven't found a likely source, and you also see oozing from IV sites. They're gonna start bleeding from anywhere they had a hole because now the clot that was there is being broken apart and it's consuming all of the clotting factors. If you presume that someone has DIC or has bleeding that won't stop, get a DIC panel. What you'll see is platelets that are being consumed. That's a CBC. You're gonna see factors be decreased. You'll see elevation of coagulation panels, the PT and the PTT. And you'll see that fibrinogen is low. You'll also see schistocytes on a smear. In general, this is going to be caused by placental contents getting into the bloodstream. And so what you have to do is give only supportive care. The goal is usually to reverse the underlying condition, but if placental contents are in the bloodstream, you can't get them out. Supportive care is going to make her stop bleeding. Give fresh frozen plasma, transfuse platelets, and blood. Essentially, give her what you can and pray. So postpartum hemorrhage is defined as a vaginal bleed of 500 cc's of blood or a c-section bleed of more than 1,000. Once you have diagnosed postpartum hemorrhage, your goal is to stop the bleeding. Most of that can be achieved with simple visual inspection and palpation of the uterus. 
most of the causes of postpartum hemorrhage are amendable to surgery only, save atony, where you can give them a medication to help to contract down the uterus. All the while, be concerned about disseminated intravascular coagulation, especially if you cannot find the source of bleeding or all your attempts to reverse the bleeding have failed. That is postoperative complication, postpartum hemorrhage. We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.